G'day. I was recently asked to make a video on addition. What is addition really? So let's talk about that today. What's the mathematical and philosophical meaning of addition? To get us started, I need to point something out. So much of mathematics is actually motivated by real world contexts. But then, mathematics tends to reveal itself as actually being bigger and bolder than any real world context, even the one that motivated it in the first place. And that is certainly true of the story of addition. All right, so to get us going, we need a first a real world context, a real world definition of addition to move us forward. Okay, mathematically, what do we know? Well, mathematics started by counting things. We like to count all sorts of things, and we have numbers to count things with. One, two, three, four, five, and so on, other counting numbers. And here's a real world definition of addition based on that idea. Addition is the result of letting go of differences and then recounting. Okay, that sounds very cryptic, but here's what I mean by that. So let me draw some dots. Here are some dots. Okay, they're green dots. And I can count them. I can see there's one, two, three green dots. And here are some more dots. Okay, here they come. I'll draw them here, and they're orange this time. And I can count those. There are two orange dots. Okay, let's now let go of differences. Let's, let's ignore they've got different colors and just say they're dots. If I let go of the differences of colors, I can now say, oh, and recount, one, two, three, four, five, there are five dots there. So I've just said that three green dots and two orange dots, if I ignore the differences, I can say there are in total five dots. That's an example of addition. Here's another example. Here are some more dots. Here are some dots to the left. Okay, some dots to the left, and I can count them, four of them. And now I'll, here come some dots to the right, and I'll count these when I finish drawing them, and I drew five of them. Okay, let's now ignore differences. Let's ignore the spatial relationship. We've got some left dots, some right dots. I don't care about the spatial relationship. I'm just going to count dots, ignore spatial differences, and now I'll recount one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. There are now nine dots. Four dots to the left, five dots to the right. Ignoring spatial differences means there's nine dots. All right, so it looks like we've got some kind of operation on pairs of numbers. If you give me two numbers, A and B, I'm actually doing this operation here that creates a third number I'm calling A plus B. Got a three and a two, I'm getting a five from that. Got a four and a five, I'm getting a nine from that. Okay, so now we're getting going on what addition is. There's a real world context motivating the existence of some sort of operation that takes pairs of numbers and creates a third number from them. But there's got to be some details to this, though, to add to this definition that's developing here in pink. So let's explore some of those details next. Let's play a game. It's a game of solitaire. Start with these six numbers on the board, the numbers one through six. And a move in this game is selecting two numbers. Maybe I'll choose the two and a five. Cross them out, or I can erase them. Goodbye. Goodbye, two and a five. And replace them with their sum. Two plus five is seven. Write that on the board. All right, so I got rid of two numbers, put one back in. The total number, uh, total number of numbers on the board is now decreased. I'll do it again. Choose any two numbers you like. I'll choose, say, four and six this time. Erase them, goodbye two of them, but replace them by their sum. Four plus six is ten. Now I've got four numbers on the board. And keep going. The goal of the game is to get to the number 21. So I'll see if I can get to 21. I'll keep going. Um, I might do, say, one and seven next. Replace them with their sum. That makes eight. Okay. Maybe we'll do 8 and 3. Ah, yes, I can see what's going to happen. 8 and 3 makes 11. And then I'll have 11 and 10. Add them together. And yes, I got 21. Bingo. Beautiful. Beautiful. All right. All right. So I won the game. So I'm going to invite you to also play the game. You can pause the video, but on a piece of paper, write the numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. Um, erase two numbers or just cross them out. Replace them with their sum. And, to, and get to a single number and try to win the game with that final number being 21. Can you do it? Make different choices that I just did then. And then I want you to play the game again. This time I want you to lose. Don't get the final number 21. So can you win the game? And then can you deliberately lose the game? Give it a try. It's actually impossible to lose this game. With the numbers one through six on the board, you are sure to end up with the final number 21, no matter which choices you make along the way. And the way to see why that is, is to actually go back and draw the picture, but instead of writing the numbers one through six, let's write dots, objects, to actually represent the numbers one through six. One, two, three, four, five, six. And let's think about what addition really was. 
For example, if I chose this 2 and this 5, addition is ignoring differences. Right now I've got some dots in one blob, I've got some dots in a different blob. Let's ignore the fact they're in different blobs, and addition is really saying, no, 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 ignoring all the differences and recounting. So I've, there we go. There's 2 plus 5. That's what addition is. And maybe I'll do addition here between these ones. Dots in this blob, dots in this blob. Ignore differences. Just regard them as always being in one blob. No difference between them. And bingo, I've just now added the 7 and the 4. And in fact, you can see what happens. I keep going. Maybe I'll add these ones next. Uh, two separate blobs. Ignore differences. Regard them as being in the same blob. Bingo, here it is. They're in the same blob. I'm having too much fun. I'm going to keep going. Maybe I'll add this and this. Ignore differences. Instead of having two separate blobs, regard them as being the same blob. And you can now see the final addition I'm going to do. Ignore these being two different blobs. Letting go of differences, they'll be the same blob. And in the end, I can see all I've done in the play of this game is bring all my objects into one blob. No matter what choices I make along the way, the final result is going to be just one blob of objects. And that one blob of objects must be all the dots I started with, which happened to be 21. So you can see this definition of addition being letting go of differences really tells me something profound about what's going on here. We have the invariant of 21 as you play this game. No matter how you make choices along the way, you're always going to get with 21, which is telling me something deep about the property of addition that I need to add to this definition. It is indeed an operation between two numbers that produces a third, but it has the property that it doesn't matter what choices you make along the way to get to answers. So let's see if we can pin that down next and add to this definition of addition. That little solitaire game was really about computing the sum 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5 plus 6. And we just saw the order in which you compute that sum just doesn't matter. You'll get 21 no matter what you do. So let's be very clear about that. For example, you might choose to add the 3 and the 4 first. Great. Then you might choose to add the 5 and the 6 as next. Great. Then you might choose to add the, that result, 11, with the 1. Great. Whatever choice you make doesn't matter. In two senses, I actually did two things just then. The actual choice of which numbers I add when doesn't seem to matter. And which additions I did when doesn't seem to matter. Whatever choice you make along the way, you'll get one blob of 21 dots. Bingo, it has to be 21. But there are two ideas in there. Order doesn't matter in two senses. So what I really mean by that is, let's, let's do an example. For example, uh, 2 plus 3, I can add the 2 and 3 in that order, or I can add the 3 and 2 in that order. If I'm thinking of a blob of 2 dots and a blob of 3 dots, or 3 dots and 2 dots, I can see no, no matter what, these are going to be the same answer. I can see the order of the individual terms doesn't matter in playing with addition. I can also see something like this. Let me do 2 plus 3 plus 4. I could do, if I think of blobs, blob of 2, a blob of 3, and a blob of 4, I could do this addition first, I'll write F for first, and then this addition second. OK. Or I could have done 2 plus 3 plus 4, this addition first, and this addition second. All right. But I can see with my blob mentality, it doesn't matter what order I do the additions, I'll get the same answer in the end. In this case, I'll get nine dots in a big blob. All right, so actually, here are two key properties of addition being revealed by that little uh, solitaire game. Uh, if you want the fancy language, people call this the commutative property, and people call this the associative property. But either way, it just says order doesn't matter. Order in the sense of the order of the actual numbers you're playing with, or the order in which you choose to do the actual additions. So, so what is addition? In our abstract definition, it's some operation that takes pairs of numbers to produce a third number such that these two basic properties hold. That A plus B is sure to be the same as B plus A. And this, A plus B plus C, if you do this first and do the second, it's getting scrawly, sorry, and A plus B plus C, if I did this first instead and that second, you'll get the same answer. Bingo. So it's an, uh, an operation that takes pairs of numbers to produce new numbers such that, so you add the word such that, it, it, the order doesn't matter in this sense, the actual order of the terms of the numbers you're adding together, and the order doesn't matter in this sense, the order of the actual additions you choose to do along the way. Great. There's actually a third property we need to add to this definition, which I guess I need more board space, and I'll do in a moment. OK, here's a picture of two blobs. One blob contains five dots. The other blob contains no dots, zero dots in there. All right, 
Now let's ignore differences. Let's ignore that they're separate dots. In fact, let's make them just one great big blob, ignoring the differences of blobness. Okay, great, there's one great big blob, and what's the result? Well, it's one blob with five dots in it again. So we've just learnt, if you take a, dot with, a blob with five dots in it, and uh, a blob with no dots in it, and ignore the differences, you're still left with a blob with five dots in it. Okay, there's another fun fundamental property of addition, how it behaves with respect to zero. In general, we have that if you're on a counting number A and add zero to it, you'll be left with the same counting number A. All right, so now we defined three behaviors of addition. That addition is an operation that takes pairs of numbers to produce a new number, such that the order you add the individual numbers does not matter. The order which you do the individual additions does not matter. And it behaves this way with respect to zero. Adding zero to a number keeps the number the same. So we've used this real world context to define the behavior of addition. Okay, now let's step back and let's use this behavior as our definition of addition in general. Let's say any operation you come up with on some sort of arithmetic system that behaves this way deserves to be called addition. Whoa, whoa. And that's where the power of mathematics lies. We've now taken ourselves out of this one real-world context and used its behavior to define general principles. For example, um, I know we can add negative numbers and it actually behaves the same way. That gets us beyond this real, one real-world context. And even gets us beyond some real-world meaning. Negative numbers start to get a shake, bit, bit shaky here and there in, in the real-world applications. But that's okay. Mathematically, we can see there's an operation that works this way for negative numbers. There's an operation that works this way for fractions as well. Totally fine. And that fits the real world in other contexts pretty darn well as well. But then we can actually really go beyond the real world and get a little shakier still, like complex numbers, imaginary numbers. There is a way to define an operation on complex numbers that behaves exactly this way. It is the addition of complex numbers. Even though the real world meaning starts to get a bit scary. What does it mean to add two complex numbers? I don't know, but I know what it means mathematically. Whoa! And we do this all sorts of number systems. You go beyond the imaginary numbers, quaternions, octonions, surreal numbers. There's a way to actually define addition in many, many complex systems defined by this behavior. And this is where the mathematics has much more powerful, much, much more power than just one real world context. We definitely use this to get us going, but once we recognize the basic structure of addition, we can use that as the powerful definition of, of addition in many, many contexts. This is what I love about mathematics.